Good morning. Let's begin the service singing hymn number 32. The words of this hymn are a poem by our beloved leader, Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, neath which our spirits blend, like brother birds that soar and sing and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love. If thou the bending reed wouldst break by thought or word unkind, pray that his spirit you partake, who loved and healed mankind. <clears throat> Seek holy thoughts and heavenly strain that make men one in love remain. <clears throat> Excuse me. Learn, too, that wisdom's rod is given for faith to kiss and know that greetings glorious from high heaven, whence joy supernal flow, come from that love divinely near, which chastens pride and earth-born fear through God, who gave that word of might which swelled creation's lay. Let there be light, and there was light. What chased the clouds away? T'was love whose finger traced aloud a bow of promise on the cloud. Thou to whose power our hope we give, free us from human strife. Fed by thy love divine, we live, for love alone is life. And life most sweet as heart to heart speaks kindly when we meet and part. Hymn 32.
The scriptural selection is from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, from the book of 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous that they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life, or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding, to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Then Solomon awoke. It had been a dream. He came to Jerusalem, where he stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He offered up burnt offerings and offerings of well-being and provided a feast for all his servants. Later, two women, who were prostitutes, came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, Please, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I gave birth while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth. We were together. There was no one else with us in the house. Only the two of us were in the house. Then this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from beside, my, my, from beside me while your servant slept. She laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast. When I arose in the morning to nurse my son, I saw that he was dead. When I looked at him closely in the morning, clearly it was not the son I had born. But the other woman said, No, the living son is mine, and the dead son is yours. The first said, No, the dead son is yours, and the living son is mine. So they argued before the king. Then the king said, The one says, This is my son that is alive, and your son is dead. While the other says, Not so. Your son is dead, and my son is the living one. So the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. The king said, Divide the living boy in two, then give half to the one and half to the other. But the woman whose son was alive said to the king, because compassion for her son burned within her, Please, my lord, Give her the living boy. Certainly do not kill him. The other said, It shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide it. Then the king responded, Give the first woman the living boy. Do not kill him. She is his mother. All Israel heard the judgment that the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to execute justice. Please join in a few moments of silent prayer and then pray together the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook.
which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Our second hymn this morning is number 79. God is love. His mercy brightens all the path in which we rove. Bliss he wakes and woe he lightens. God is wisdom. God is love. Hymn 79. Welcome to this church service. This church is one of the worldwide branches of the Mother Church, the First Church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We also meet on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. to share experiences and healings resulting from the study and application of Christian science. During our Sunday services, children and teenagers are gathered nearby in our Sunday school. They are learning to apply Christian science to their daily lives. This church provides a free public reading room as a loving outreach to our community. Here the Bible and the Christian Science textbook and other Christian Science literature may be studied, borrowed, or purchased. The reading room is open after every Sunday service and before each Wednesday evening meeting or by appointment anytime convenient for you. Membership in a branch church is vital to a Christian scientist. It brings fellowship and spiritual growth to participation in the church activities. We welcome applications from students of Christian Science for membership in this church. Please see the usher for information or send us an email. Everyone is welcome to attend our services, to use the reading room and bring children to the Sunday school. If you're unable to join us in person, we welcome, to, welcome you to join our online broadcast on Zoom or visit our website or our Facebook page. Access information for our online presence is posted on the bulletin board in the foyer. Please join us after this service this morning for our annual Christmas sing. We'll be here in the auditorium after this service 
and we'll also be sharing the same on Zoom. Sing his praise in all the world 
Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. <coughs> we shall now read scriptural text and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explain the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson for today begins at page 52 of the Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, is the universe, including man, evolved by atomic force? The golden text is from 1 Corinthians. Let no man deceive himself, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Responsive reading is from the Good News Translation in Today's English Version of the Bible, 2nd Edition, from Romans and from 1 Corinthians. How great are God's riches! How deep are His wisdom and knowledge! For all things were created by Him, and all things exist through Him and for Him. To God be the glory forever. The scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and set aside the understanding of the scholars. So then, where does that leave the wise or the scholars or the skillful debaters of this world? God has shown that this world's wisdom is foolishness. For God in his wisdom made it impossible for people to know him by means of their own wisdom. For what seems to be God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And what seems to be God's weakness is stronger than human strength. We have not received this world spirit. Instead, we have received the spirit sent by God so that we may know all that God has given us. So then, we do not speak in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, as we explain spiritual truths to those who have the Spirit. The following citations comprise our sermon. I'll read from the Bible. Daniel, blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. John, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth, comprehended it not. As announced in the explanatory note, I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The starting point of divine science is that God, Spirit, is all in all, and that there is no other might nor mind, that God is love, and therefore he is divine principle. To grasp the reality and order of being in its science, you must begin by reckoning God as the divine principle of all that really is. God is infinite, the only life, substance, spirit, or soul, the only intelligence of the universe, including man. 
Let there be light is the perpetual demand of truth and love, changing chaos into order and discord into the music of the spheres. The mythical human theories of creation, anciently classified as the higher criticism, sprang from cultured scholars in Rome and in Greece, but they afforded no foundation for accurate views of creation by the divine mind. The notion of a material universe is utterly opposed to the theory of man as evolved from mind. Such fundamental errors send falsity into all human doctrines and conclusions and do not accord infinity to deity. Darkness and doubt encompass thought so long as it bases creation on materiality. The true theory of the universe, including man, is not in material history, but in spiritual development. Inspired thought relinquishes a material, sensual, and mortal theory of the universe and adopts the spiritual and immortal. Proverbs. Incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Daniel, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Now the queen by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I, I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself 
against the Lord of heaven. <clears throat> this is the interpretation of the thing. Meany, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Pires, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Psalms, put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. The universe, like man, is to be interpreted by science from its divine principle, God, and then it can be understood. But when explained on the basis of physical sense and represented as subject to growth, maturity, and decay, the universe, like man, is and must continue to be an enigma. Whatever furnishes the semblance of an idea governed by its principle furnishes food for thought. Observation, invention, study, and original thought are expansive and should promote the growth of mortal mind out of itself, out of all that is mortal. Incorrect views lower the standard of truth. If materialistic knowledge is power, it is not wisdom. It is but a blind force. For right reasoning, there should be but one fact before the thought, namely, spiritual existence. If God, the all in all, be the creator of the spiritual universe, including man, then everything entitled to a classification as truth or science must be comprised in a knowledge or understanding of God, for there can be nothing beyond illimitable divinity. There is no physical science inasmuch as all truth proceeds from the divine mind. Therefore, truth is not human and is not a law of matter, for matter is not a lawgiver. Science is an emanation of divine mind and is alone able to interpret God aright. Divine science, rising above physical theories, excludes matter, resolves things into thoughts, and replaces the objects of material sense with spiritual ideas. All the evidence of physical sense and all the knowledge obtained from physical sense must yield to science to the immortal truth of all things. Isaiah, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Mark, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribes. Luke. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. 
And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Jesus of Nazareth was the most scientific man that ever trod the globe. He plunged beneath the material surface of things and found the spiritual cause. He was inseparable from Christ, the Messiah, the divine idea of God outside the flesh. This enabled Jesus to demonstrate his control over matter. The scientific manifestation of power is from the divine nature and is not supernatural since science is an explication of nature. The belief that the universe, including man, is governed in general by material laws, but that occasionally spirit sets aside these laws, this belief belittles omnipotent wisdom and gives to matter the precedence over spirit. Which institutes life, matter or mind? Does life begin with mind or with matter? Is life sustained by matter or by spirit. Spiritual understanding unfolds mind, life, truth, and love, and demonstrates the divine sense, giving the spiritual proof of the universe in Christian science. This understanding is not intellectual, is not the result of scholarly attainments. It is the reality of all things brought to light. Those who are willing to leave their nets or to cast them on the right side for truth have the opportunity now, as aforetime, to learn and to practice Christian healing. Matthew And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there and great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. John, there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. 
and himself believed in his whole house. Job, I will fetch my knowledge from afar and will ascribe righteousness to my maker. Mind's control over the universe, including man, is no longer an open question, but is demonstrable science. Jesus illustrated the divine principle and the power of immortal mind by healing sickness and sin and destroying the foundations of death. Our master taught no mere theory, doctrine, or belief. It was the divine principle of all real being, which he taught and practiced. The effect of this science is to stir the human mind to a change of base on which it may yield to the harmony of the divine mind. The point for each one to decide is whether it is mortal mind or immortal mind that is causative. The Christian scientist, understanding scientifically that all is mind, commences with mental causation, the truth of being, to destroy the error. This corrective is an alterative, reaching to every part of the human system. God creates and governs the universe, including man. The universe is filled with spiritual ideas which he evolves, and they are obedient to the mind that makes them. Psalms. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Acts. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed, laid his hands on him, and healed him. For when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. Habakkuk, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Weary of their material beliefs, from which comes so much suffering, invalids grow more spiritual as the error or belief that life is in matter yields to the reality of spiritual life. The scientific fact that man and the universe are evolved from spirit and so are spiritual is as fixed in divine science as is the proof that mortals gain the sense of health only as they lose the sense of sin and disease. When you say man's body is material, I say with Paul, be willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Give up your material belief of mind and matter and have but one mind even God, for this mind forms its own likeness. You must understand your way out of human theories relating to health, or you will never believe that you are quite free from some ailment. Let us banish sickness as an outlaw and abide by the rule of perpetual harmony, God's law. When the first symptoms of disease appear, Dispute the testimony of the material senses with divine science. Suffer no claim of sin or of sickness to grow upon the thought. Dismiss it with an abiding conviction that it is illegitimate, because you know that God is no more the author of sickness than he is of sin. You have no law of his to support the necessity either of sin or sickness, but you have divine authority for denying that necessity and healing the sick. 
rise in the conscious strength of the spirit of truth to overthrow the plea of mortal mind, alias matter, arrayed against the supremacy of spirit. Man is and forever has been God's reflection. God is infinite, therefore ever present, and there is no other power nor presence. Hence the spirituality of the universe is the only fact of creation. Proverbs. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. First John. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. The divine origin of Jesus gave him more than human power to expound the facts of creation and demonstrate the one mind which makes and governs man and the universe. God forms and peoples the universe. The light of spiritual understanding gives gleams of the infinite only, even as nebulae indicate the immensity of space. The periods of spiritual ascension are the days and seasons of mind's creation in which beauty, sublimity, purity, and holiness, yea, the divine nature, appear in man and the universe, never to disappear. Please join in singing hymn number 65. From glory unto glory, be this our joyous song. From glory unto glory, tis love that leads us on. As wider yet and wider the rising splendors glow, 
what wisdom is revealed in us, what freedom we may know. Hymn 65. The Scientific Statement of Being from the Christian Science Textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John, third chapter. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for he shall see him, we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness 
that come through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Amen.